My name is Alex Lazarus and I'm your host today on Adobe Live. Uh, today we're joined with Christina Jackson of Club Creative. But before we jump into that, in case you missed yesterday's special episode with Paco, Paco did a Lightroom tutorial. He was using some of his photography from Lake Tahoe. It's incredible. So make sure you go check out the replay on YouTube or Behance. Um, I think you'll absolutely enjoy it. It's a great video. Um, and then later today, we also have our artist spotlight. So that's super exciting. And then the rest of this week, we are doing uh, recaps of some of the top creative challenges. So stick around for that after this stream. Um, Christina, welcome back to day two. <laughs> I am so excited for us to pick up where we left off. Um, yeah. Really quickly, tell everybody who you are, where you're at, all that good stuff. Yeah, hi everyone. So for anyone that didn't join in yesterday, I'm Christina, I'm the owner of Club Creative and today we're going to be working on some cheesies. We Yesterday we got started with the logos, the colour palettes, the illustrations and today we're going to be building up the packaging and creating the mock-ups and maybe if we've got some time we'll create a poster for it as well. But if you would like to have a look at some of my previous work, this is my Instagram. As you can see, I love colour, bright colours, bold and bright illustration work and a lot of packaging as well, all of these. So yeah, check out my Instagram or you can have a look at my Behance too, which includes the bulk of every project. Yeah, that's yeah. everything. I love it. Your your work in the consumer space and packaging is super inspiring. And I know lots <laughs> of fans were in the stream yesterday and today. Uh, so we're super excited. If you are wanting to engage with us, hang out with us in chat, make sure you're over on Behance instead of YouTube. And that's be.net slash Adobe Live. That way we can read all your comments. You can ask questions. Uh, you can provide puns. We had lots of fun yesterday <laughs> reading some chat puns. Um, we can absolutely take more today. We'll be doing, as she said, different flavors and wheat. That's a lot of copy. So give us your favorite uh, cheesy puns throughout the stream today. Yeah. Perfect. So okay. as a refresher, I know you mentioned that the brand that we're working on is Cheesies. How is this inspired? Where can, can people design along with you? Tell us all about that. Yeah. So um, as part of Club Creative, we also offer Club Creative challenges for other creators, designers out there. And they're available on my website for free. And every quarterly, I just release eight different brands with different names, different business sectors, and you can all take part in it. And this quarter, Cheesies is available in there. So that's what we're designing today. And yeah, it's amazing to see everyone else's ideas and concepts. So if you do want to have a look, just go on hashtag Club Creative on Instagram and you can see everyone else's concepts. I think a few people have actually started doing cheesies after yesterday who joined in. So it's really nice to see everyone's ideas too. That's awesome. I love that. And you, you can do that uh, through your website. You've got the shopping portal and it's free to yeah. download and people will get your PDF. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So that's all the information you need to start jamming along with us real time today. I would love to see what you guys come up with. So without further ado, we'll let you take it away from here. Yeah. So, so yesterday... So can you give us a recap of yeah, yesterday's... Yeah, yeah. So if you wasn't here yesterday, we had a look at the mood board. We finalized on that we wanted to use more handwritten style fonts and we really liked how they have all these puns on these and that's why we was asking people for some pun ideas yesterday all about cheese we did have a few good ideas yesterday but if anyone has any more please send them in and we wanted to use the craft paper for the packaging and we also really liked how packed full this is so this is what we're going to do today we're going to have all the information, illustrations, images, all crammed in to the little packet. And it's just gonna, we really want it to look really playful and fun. So then after that, we started looking at different font options. 
we decided that we were going to keep the logo really just simple, just a type logo. So we had a look through a few fonts, all in the handwritten, doodly, playful style. And we decided on this font, Kitty Times, for the headline font. And then the accent font, we went with Kopi, Senja, Sans, and Body, Wanty Free Marker. So we thought that they worked really well together. And as you can see here in the logo that we designed yesterday, we just have cheesies and then the little tagline cheese flavored mini crackers. So then from there, we started having a look at the color palettes. So yesterday we didn't know what mozzarella was, but after the live, I went and had a look and it is green. So we got lucky with that and we had a look at some different colors, placed it on the craft paper to see what would work best. And we finalized with these three colors, but we could change them once we've got everything on the packaging, just in case it doesn't work. So we've got the three flavors there and then here we can see some of the puns that we have but like i said if anyone's got any for red lesser or mozzarella i think we've got a good one for original cheddar but the other two if you do have any please send them in <laughs> and then we moved on to the illustrations so this is what we created yesterday I drew these up on paper first and then I scanned them in and then I used my Wacom tablet to draw them out. We used this oval brush using the paintbrush tool just then it looks a bit more organic and free flowing rather than such harsh lines. But we did use a pen tool for the geometric shapes. But for this we did use the paintbrush tool just then it looks a bit more like it was hand drawn. And then from there, we then went in with like a charcoal pencil brush, this one. So we use this to just make it a little bit thicker and add those rough textures all around, just so it matches the organic, natural feel that we want for the brand. And then, yeah, so yesterday we actually managed to get started on some of the packaging. So this is what we'll be continue doing today. And yeah, it looks really fun so far. I can't wait to start adding all the information in on the, on the back of the packet. And of course, starting the other two flavors too. Yeah, I love this. I think it's, like you said, it's also a really great start. And I think the, um, the craft paper on the back really helps bring that organic yeah. kind of all natural ingredients to the forefront yeah. other than a heavy color coat on there, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what we want. So we can just get started on the packaging now. So I'm just gonna bring over this information. This information is just for the front of pack and then this is, well, yeah, so that's the front of pack and these are gonna go on the back. So these are just some mock information. We could have just used Lorem Ipsum, but I thought we may as well try out some real information from another cheese brand. <laughs> Absolutely. Real information goes such a long way. And I think, yeah. especially in your mock-ups, if you're using a lot of Ipsum, it just doesn't feel as yeah curated or like designed, you know, if you can just go a little bit further and just make up your own content, sometimes it makes it feel yeah, even yeah. more real. It does. Yeah. So I just pulled out some information from different cracker brands out there and changed them up a little bit, just so then they're a bit more fun and playful like we want. Absolutely. So let's get started with this. So I thought this would be really funny. Crack me open already. That's great. I love that. <laughs> do you think. typically find yourself really writing a lot of copy for your projects? Like, do you really enjoy that part of the process? Or do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely for passion projects. Sometimes even with client projects, if I can come up with a really fun tagline or something, I'll suggest it to them and most of the times they love it too and they want to include it in their brand. Awesome. Yeah, I think I guess, that's great. Yeah, I guess it's because when you're really into the brand and you're really designing for it, you start learning some things and you come up with ideas and you kind of think about it all day and all night and you're so excited for it. So you start thinking of ideas for them as well. I totally agree, especially because, like you said, you're you're living and breathing their brand for the course of that project. So yeah, yeah. you might as well... If you have some ideas, might as well share them. Yeah, definitely. 
So are you building another guide or what is this line for? No, we're just going to do, I had an idea of doing like the little tur, you know, the little lines, the dashed lines. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. Something like this, but we'll do it a little bit thicker. And are you going to texture this one as well as the, like, like the other illustrations or are you going to keep it more uh, just very uh, clean? We'll see. We'll see. We'll have a go. We might get a little bit too busy if we start adding so much on. Yeah. I always get confused with this, like which way I should be going, <laughs> higher <laughs> or lower. Maybe something like this. Let's have it right below that. Nice. Do you have uh, any like scissor icons readily available? We could try and draw one up, but I don't know. Well, I feel like work. you, yeah, or you could, normally I feel like you kind of just, you know, rip the bag open or like pop yeah. it open. <laughs> True. Um, I know we talked about Comic Papyrus briefly yesterday in Comic Sans. Yeah. <laughs> I found out yesterday, or this morning actually, that Meg Lewis has a Comic Sans, and it's like beachy Comic Sans inspired. Uh -huh. it's, it's great. It's super cute. It's very adorable. Oh, wow. I'll have to have a look at that one as well. Yeah, it's great. So I'm just going to underline this just to add a little bit of something there. So I've just used one of these other paintbrush brushes just so that it's a bit more tapered. And again, it looks like it's been hand drawn onto the. Yeah, it's kind of matching that that marker aesthetic of the, yeah, the type. Yeah. When you're designing these uh, pieces, how do you go about trying to keep all the the elements kind of consistent? Is it just something you have to do manually um, or is there any tips and tricks you have with that? Sometimes if it's with illustrations and I've not expanded the strokes or anything and I've left them live, I would usually just copy and paste one of them and leave them on the side. And then once I've drawn everything out, zoom out, highlight it all, and then use the eyedropper tool on the one that the thickness that I like. And then I feel like that just gets them all unison. So that's awesome. what I usually do. Same with colors, anything, I'll just do this and then just select two, all same. And then make sure that all the blacks are all the same blacks. Or sometimes I'll add the colors into the swatches like I have with these three. Yeah, yeah so and you're then, doing a global color palette? Yeah, yeah to make sure everything's the same because I feel like with black sometimes it's all sometimes you can't really see it on the screen so you can't tell that it's slightly different yeah you gotta make sure that it's a like the the, the pure value yeah yeah we I think you can set that by default too I think originally Illustrator has a, like a very gray dark gray version of it I yeah think you yeah just change that by default to be actual pure black I'll have to have a look. But yeah, so yesterday we drew this little flag. I think we might have it in black. Oh, that's so, cute. Yeah. What was that on the flag? Just want to keep it fun and playful. So I think that works quite well. Yeah, that's great. And it brings in this block as well, so it's not so heavy down at the bottom of the packet. Yeah, are you still loving the, the the ticket idea? Yeah, yeah, I do still think that's quite cute. And once we've got the information on there, so let's get on with the information here. We've already got this, which is the tagline. Yeah, and can then, you remind me what content's going in that spot again? Is it the cal cal calories or what was it? Yeah, in? we're gonna have this no nonsense just the important stuff just the stuff that sells i think it makes people feel better if they see that it's 
only 90 calories and there's no artificial colors or anything. Yeah, that's great. I love that you're thinking about how a customer might be purchasing these off the shelf or yeah, of course. what reinforces their purchasing behaviors. It's great. Next, everyone wants to feel better when they're eating snacks. So if it's only got a few calories in there. What are, what are your go-to favorite snacks? Oh, I love sweets. I'm a sweet person. I don't yeah. think I'm even a cracker person, to be honest, <laughs> even though we're designing crackers today. I love sweets. I love Skittles. Um, anything Vimto flavored. <laughs> yeah, I am a sweet person. I think more sweets than chocolate or crisp. Mm, interesting. I'm much more on the chocolate spectrum myself. Oh, really? Yeah. Not, I think just like candy, candy like that doesn't really get me very excited. But chocolate, sign me up. <laughs> I think I go through different phases. Some days I'll crave a chocolate bar and some days I just want something sweet. Yeah, totally. What about baked goods? Um, I like really. don't. I do like donuts. Um, yeah, I'm not the biggest cake person, but I do like donuts. Makes sense. That's a lot of sugar on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> I see so many regulars in chat. What's up, Wade? What's up, Robert? Stoney? Christina? Barbara? What's up? What's up? Katrina? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I know you're tuning in from a around the world and we appreciate you hanging out today. So we're just gonna use, I'm hoping that this font, so I want like a little X, so it's. Oh, like a, like a check mark almost, or like a, yeah, yeah. interesting, yeah, yeah. Like a bullet point or dot point. Yeah, I like using the font sometimes. I try and so that again, that's another way of keeping everything all similar together. I say it all works well. Maybe we could just add a stroke. So what is the stroke helping you with? Is it? It's just, I'm just trying to make it a little bit slimmer. I feel like oh, it's okay. a bit too bold, just then it matches this body font a bit more. Got it. Just something like that. You can also probably do like a manual version of it since you've already done that, yeah, yeah, of course, that line yeah. above. Yeah, you can definitely draw this out. Oh, I think I've just too much the font. And it's it's there, it's ready to go. Yeah. David asks, hey, Christina, I'm interested in knowing more about cha charging for packages. You oh, wow, I can't speak today. It's Thursday. <laughs> uh, hey, Christina, I'm interested in knowing more about charging for packaging design. Do you consider it worth more or less than a logo? um i think definitely more because it's it's a lot of information and it's a lot of organization and you have to make sure everything's correct you don't want to end up with a big bill at the end where the printing's gone wrong so i think it's it's a lot of work for both me and the clients to make sure that everything's correct and everything's good to go and i feel like that it takes a lot more time and effort and I do think it does cost more in the long run even though brand identity does take a lot of like brain power and ideas and creativity and with packaging you are just using 
what you've already created but there is a lot of content on there and maybe they want patterns illustrations different designs on there that can take a bit more time yeah i think it's a really good way of saying it really depends <laughs> yeah depends on, the logo, it does. depends on the brand depends on the packaging depends on how many pieces are in the packaging yeah yeah is it a system think, is it just a one-off yeah i think sometimes some clients have more minimal packaging and then it's just literally they just want the logo on top of the box then with that then i guess it wouldn't be more than the brand package itself i would it's you we would just have to talk at the beginning and go for exactly what you want what you're looking for and then we'll see from there really yeah there you go Engage the client, engage the project. Yeah. So I'm just making sure that it all fits and it doesn't get in the way of all the artwork that we've already put on. I'm making sure it's all aligned. I can already see here that these are two different blacks. David says, haha, for sure, there's no right answer. <laughs> no. Not an easy answer, I guess, is the best way to say it. Do you find that clients typically come to you for either or or both? How, do they, how does that typically happen for you? Um, usually, they would come for the brand identity first. And sometimes I do also say, Let's just start with the branding of the business first and get that perfect, exactly how they want it, exactly how it will work for the business. So normally I would say, let's just start with this and then later on in the line, we will have a look. And usually the clients also need to do a lot of research themselves to begin with. They need to look for printers. They need to find the die lines, the templates, everything for me to use. So whilst we're working on the branding of the business they can be getting on with that side of it and then once we've got the branding finalized and it looks great it's ready to go then we would have a chat again maybe jump on zoom have a phone call see what ideas they've found if they've changed their mind on the packaging they might have found a new style of box or labels they want and then we would start looking at what they want in there and then yeah, we would start the packaging after that. Awesome. I think that's really helpful for people who are starting to jump into this, this world. Yeah. And I think sometimes the packaging can completely rely on the branding. So they might think, oh, they want this big, I don't know, like a big bulky box. And then once we've done the branding, it might look a lot more dainty and minimalistic and then they might decide oh actually i don't want to do this huge box anymore i would prefer something more simpler so i think it is better to start with the branding first yeah i agree otherwise you don't know if you're designing everything on brand <laughs> yeah i'm just still filling everything up, just put in the 23 grams. How much uh, content do you typically need to have on each package? For this, cheesies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for like, you know, explain it to me and the audience. Uh, who may have never done, you know, cracker packaging before and the bags that, you know, I guess how much it, weight, nutrition, all that kind of stuff. I guess if it's like a real project, then you would have to rely on the client to give you everything because you're not going to know everything about every line of business and every product line. So you would need to ask the client for all of that and obviously there's a lot of like legal stuff that you don't want to be dealing with so you have to ask them for everything um 
But if it is just a passion project and you're just having a play around, then sometimes, like we said before, you could just use lorem ipsum and see where the content might fit well in your design. So you just place it wherever you like. Or most like for this project, I just had a look at a lot of other brands out there that already exist. Even they didn't even have to be crackers. There was there was some like fruit and nut little packets. And it's just all about the size of the packaging as well. So how small it is, how big it is. This is quite a small like snack pack. So it is probably got a lot more information that's needed on here, but we did want it to look quite jam packed and full and a bit crazy and all over the place. So this is why we've got so much information on here. Oh, that's great. I think having a lot of information is sometimes really helpful in terms of making the content look good and have a good hierarchy and makes people want to actually engage with the product. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes if it's a bit too empty, it it can look a bit like same. It, I don't know. I do prefer packaging that's a lot busier, full of colour, life, illustrations, as opposed to more minimal packaging. Yeah. But I do also enjoy working with minimal packaging too. But it is fun to just let it all go wild and go crazy with it. Yeah, I think it's if the content helps add or is necessary, I think it's it's great. But if I think reduction in terms of content is also super helpful if needed. Yeah. I'm just having a look for we can have this. Saw some local farms. We may not need it, but or maybe we could place it on the back. So now we need we need the puns. Are we gonna go with easy cheesy or cheesy peasy for this one? Ooh. That's a hard one. Chat, what are your what are your preferences? Easy peasy or sorry, easy cheesy or cheesy peasy? Put them both together. <laughs> Let us know, chat. Um I don't know, what is your gut saying? Do you which one do you prefer so far? I think I like Easy Cheesy just because it's the original flavor and yeah. it makes sense because it's just easy. Perfect. Send it. Try Easy Cheesy and then I did also want to include the actual flavor because I don't think you'd be able to tell <laughs> what easy, what easy, easy, um, easy cheesy is. When you started to kind of create this brief, did you have like a audience or a demographic in mind as your target? Yeah, I did start thinking more for kids. I wanted it for like in kids' lunch boxes stuff like that but then I guess it can also appeal to adults too older adults yeah. just because it's it's got that natural healthy organic side to it and it makes sense and I think the flavors maybe like mozzarella and red lesser maybe that would appeal more to older people rather than kids but I think maybe this flavor kids would like in the lunch boxes. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Wade says peasy makes me think of think of peas. I don't want peas and crackers. Okay. Uh, okay. So we won't go with that one. We'll stick with it. <laughs> Fargy goes. Do I detect a a Manchuian accent? Great to see a UK designer <laughs> live here. Yeah, so we can go with something like this. I just need to make sure that it's clear that that's the flavor. I feel like when you've got um, packaging that's so busy all over the place, it might be hard to actually, I don't want people to, you know, stand there and read all of it to find out what the flavor is. 
Yeah, so. I agree. But I feel like with that, like you have here where you put original cheddar next to it, it seems like a really good way of tying Easy Cheesy and the flavor together really nicely. Yeah, yeah. And I guess with packaging like this, even though it is quite busy and all over the place, because they're all going to have their own color palettes, it's a bit easier to separate what flavor is what. I agree. So if this was a client project, what would you be doing differently or how would the process be different? So if this I guess what we would do is still the same this but with the content or what they would prefer if they just sent me a list of all the content I would probably start with seeing if I can fit everything in but then if if it doesn't work I'd just ask them what's what's the priority what do we want on there what do we not need on there and then we would look into a few revisions see any changes and then I would definitely get the first flavor finalized first and get that absolutely perfect how they want it and then from the i would just get on with working with the rest of the flavors and then send it all over for approval great how many rounds of uh, revisions do you typically work through with the client um so with branding projects i normally do two concepts to begin with and then three three rounds of revisions from there but with the rounds of revisions I normally do like a specific amount so if they send everything like if they turn around in the first revision and say oh I don't like anything and I just want a whole redesign I've come up with some new ideas then that's when maybe I would say okay but there will maybe be some additional charges to this just because if they have changed their mind completely from what we've discussed and I usually ask clients to provide a Pinterest board along for the discovery call at the beginning just then we can both flip through have a look through see what the favorite pieces are what they like what they don't like and the Pinterest board usually includes a variety of things it's not all logos and branding design it's there can be just different colors sometimes there's interiors all sorts of stuff so um usually i try and get a really good idea of what they're looking for at the beginning so then they're gonna love either the first or the second concept or they might want a merge of the two and then from there we would just have three rounds of revisions and i just try and let them know that make sure you have a look at this properly take a few days then just write up all the revisions in one go rather than you know if I do a few changes and then they come back a few days later like oh I did also want this doing oh I didn't I wanted this doing as well it just makes it easier for you as well to just sit down spend a few hours on it and you can work through all the amendments that they have with packaging design too and then instead of going back and forth back and forth yeah that makes total sense I'm just filling up all of this information. Do you typically do like fixed fee projects or hourly? How does that typically work for you? Um, I do a bit of both. So I have some clients that are with me long term and it's not always a set amount of work every month. So we just work hourly there um so with the, we i just have agreements with different clients whatever they prefer what they're looking for so new clients startups rebrands stuff like that then they are just set prices depending on what they want included in their project and then with a few clients who do stick with me monthly or annually and want work continuously but sometimes they i have a few clients who just pay one monthly fee and I just work with them throughout every day. Some Sometimes they're hardly there, sometimes they're there every day, but it all works out in the monthly fee. And then I also have clients who 
are not really sure of how much they're going to need every month. So we just set on an hourly price and I just keep track of how many hours I do for, the, for them. Great. Helena is asking, um, what would the size of the packaging be? For this? Yeah. So with this, I, I don't really know. I just worked it around the mock-up. Um, so I found a mock-up online from Yellow Images of what I wanted. And then I just had to play around in Photoshop, like put different size um, squares, different colored shapes. Had to look at how much of the artwork falls off the sides. And then I had some guides on here yesterday to just let me know that I have to stay within the, these, this. So with this, as it's just a passion project, I don't really have a size for it. I guess if you are going to be putting it on a mock-up, just open up the mock-up, have a look at what size fits on there and then bring it over to Illustrator and design on that. So let me just show you this actually. So down here is the mock-up. So I just opened up Photoshop and I saw that this was the front. That's how much room I have. Up here is where it starts. It should, the seal is, so I know that I can't put artwork up there. And then the back, the seal is slightly over to the right. So later on, once we've got the packaging done, I'll just need to make sure that the content is here and here and it doesn't go over the seal around the back. It's an interesting way of uh, reverse engineering your mockups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because sometimes I find you create something really, really nice on illustration, you love it, and you just can't wait to see it on a mock-up. And then once you put it on the mock-up, it just doesn't work at all. The sizing is all wrong. And then it's you don't want to start fiddling around with the mock-ups and changing up the sizing. So I think sometimes it's, it's all right to just work backwards and see. Have you ever uh, made your own mock-ups? or like mocked up a collateral piece or a bottle or packaging for a client? Yeah, um, so usually I would mock up like flat things like leaflets, business cards. I just added drop shadow, put some texture overlay on there. But I haven't, well, I have, if I've got an image, like if I can't find a specific mock up, but I've got an image of what I want, then I would just take it into Photoshop and then use the perspective warp and apply my artwork over the top of it. Have you ever uh, like made your own physical mock-ups for your clients or no? Only digital? Um, I have in, when I worked in a design studio in-house. We used to do it quite a lot though. We'd print stuff out, you know, stick it all together with some double-sided tape. But not here just because my clients are just all around the world. Sometimes I would maybe make something for myself to have a look at. So if I'm working on, say, like a cross fold leaflet and I don't know which which orientation the artwork needs to be. So I'll just get a piece of paper, draw it all out, fold it all up so I know which way it's going. And maybe sometimes I'll print it out, have a look, see that it all fits well and no artwork is falling off the folds or anything. So if it's a more complicated project, then yeah, I would definitely suggest printing it out and even if it's just a black and white rough print just have a look at how it all works great i think that's awesome i think there's a, a lot of people in chat thinking that this is a box originally but no chat this is a bag of chips or crisps or crackers oh, no. i'm just <laughs> butchering all the terminology now <laughs> uh, but yeah box not in the schedule for right now, but maybe later on. Maybe if she's feeling adventurous after the stream. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can yeah. try. A full, we need the whole, you know, truck. We need a truck, we need a pallet of yeah, yeah. boxes and then an individual box as well. We could do a full flavor range in a box. I think it'd be really cool to see these illustrations on like a, a big, you know, truck going around yeah town. yeah that'd be really fun yeah big smiley faces everywhere exactly the fun little illustrations bringing everybody happiness in the neighborhood yeah that would be really nice to drive past yeah. what's the uh 
coolest thing or place that you've seen any of your work? Could, uh, do you mean where I hasn't seen... been on a car or a billboard or anything like that yet? Um, let me think. I've seen, I did some work in the past and I honestly did not know who they were, where they came from or anything. I didn't know where they were based. And then one day I was just shopping around um, my town centre and then I just saw it there, just wow. inside the um, the shops, just on the wall. And I was, it was crazy, really. I didn't, I didn't even know they were from here because I don't usually get a lot of clients who are from around here, to be honest. Not a lot from the UK either. Yeah. They're, they're mostly just everywhere. So some, it's really crazy if I do see anything around here because usually everyone's everywhere who I work with. That's funny. That's awesome. Chat, let us know what you've designed that's made it somewhere unexpected or really cool. I think it's always fun hearing stories of like yeah, yeah. what somebody's made and where it's at and all that stuff. Yeah, I would really like to see something. I've done a lot of like van design, van wraps, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But again, they're everywhere worldwide. They're not really in this country. So yeah, yeah. I would really like to see those. Sometimes I get pictures or I see it on their own social media. And it's really nice to see. It's nice to see when you're just looking at everything digital and then see it all printed especially something in such a large scale like that because then it's business cards leaflets stuff like that they all just kind of look the same unless they're printed on a specific material i agree do you have any uh kind of dream dream spots or things that you wish that you could see like a billboard in times square or i don't know um what probably are your pieces uh, probably, yeah, I would like to see it on a billboard in Times Square, definitely. I've never even been to America, so that would be amazing if I got a flight there and saw it. Yeah, yeah. How's that, I was going to say, where it sounds like a great trip, like opportunity for you to just go visit all the the vans and billboards that you've designed yeah, for people yeah, in other yeah. countries. Yeah, that would be really good. A yeah. lot of Instagram content. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of selfies in front of their, their van. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be funny. Amelia asked, do you include prices for product production in what you charge the client? Um, I guess it would depend if we have discussed it and you, we've agreed that that's what you want to do. But in the initial stages then no it would like I said before I would normally do that afterwards after the branding side has been done if that's what you meant by the question I think so but it could also be I think I think it really depends on the project and what they're specifically looking for because I know sometimes you can have the original design done but it needs a lot of artworking in order to get it ready for production. And sometimes yeah. that needs to be farmed out to other people or other designers to help you out with that. Yeah, I think sometimes with smaller scale items like leaflets, business cards, stuff like that, then I would get it all ready for print, ready to go. I would normally send the client the original file and the print ready file. Um, but with things like larger scale stuff like vans car artwork stuff like that then i would get it ready to some extent and then say to them just get it checked by them or if there's a specific file they need then just let me know and then i will get it all ready for them so you'd asked hi christina do you can we use a font size less than six points for packaging design so usually no i normally would I think the smallest I've ever gone is four points on packaging and that was really small but it was like the fine details but today this is 
we're at three points. <laughs> but we're not on a we're not printing. <laughs> this is just for fun, so we're okay today. That's funny. I didn't even catch that. Um, <laughs> welcome, Annika. But yeah, I would say also six points depends on the font. Some fonts are still legible at six yeah. points and some aren't. So do a gut check. I prefer just to print things manually and yeah, check yeah. it with my own eyes before saying that a typeface can work or not. Yeah, definitely. I have a little um, printout that I printed a while ago with just all the, like the, a certain font in all the points, all, all the sizes, just so that I could just have a look at it Smart. instead of reprinting. So if there's a certain font that I always use, for example, in my own branding, then I've got it all printed out just so then I can just have a look at it. That's a really good idea. Great questions, chat. Uh, Johanna's asking, is there a method to like batch process infos from CSV? There definitely is, and I would highly recommend it's kind of one of those things that you might need to Google it for a better tutorial than I can explain over the this project. But especially if you're doing things like business cards and things like that, there's some really handy ways of just pulling in that information from the CSV and populating all that content and exporting it for yeah. you. Yeah. That way you're not having to manually do 300 people's individual contact information. Yeah, I've definitely done that before. <laughs> Like all it took was one project where I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm tired of this. How do I automate yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, I've done that a lot of times before. And then they usually come back again. New staff member. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we hired new, four new people and yeah. we changed people's names. Or this person moved or they have a new phone number. Yeah. Or someone's changed the name, or yeah. someone's been promoted. Then exactly. you're looking for a full list of names. Because so I always just save the files as the name of that person. Mm. And you end up looking through everything to just find who this person is to change. Yeah. The smallest of details. So we've got manufactured by cheesies. We don't have a real location. We just have one, two, three street name. What about what, what about like one, two, three cheesy cheesy place or cheesy uh, road? Cheesy road. There you go. <laughs> but one, two, three. Easy street. I don't know. Cheesy road. So you'd ask, always... do you often prefer, uh, do you often purchase illustrations or pictures for your client's projects or do you prefer to create them on your own? Um, I do prefer to just create them myself, but sometimes it's, if they are looking for something specific where I don't think it's in my scope to draw or design, then I would just tell them, here's um, some stock websites, maybe if you want to have a look and see what if there's anything on there that you like, and then we'll have a look at purchasing it, and then I will use it in the project. But normally I would try, usually with illustrations and stuff, I do try to draw it all out myself, illustrate them all, and then they're usually happy with it all straight away. Sometimes there's been a few changes, but it's normally just minor stuff like maybe make it a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner. They might want it just the outlines rather than the fill. But yeah, normally I would try and draw it for myself. But sometimes some things can be hard to draw out. So <laughs> it's yeah. helpful having some websites out there like Adobe Stock and places like that. Or find some friends who are really good at illustration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you seem to be pretty talented with your illustrations. So you could probably accomplish a lot on your own. 
I think it's just a lot of practice doing it over and over and over again and then you start figuring out ways of making it a bit easier for yourself but yeah it would it definitely helps if you do have people out there who are who specializes in those type of things like I try and stay away from drawing illustrating people I just don't like faces I like drawing faces and painting faces I used to always paint portraits but for some reason I can't do it digitally <laughs> <laughs> why do you think that is I think it's because I'm not drawing on I guess if I had an iPad maybe where I'm looking directly at the screen because with the Wacom tablet that I use it is just I'm looking at the screen and drawing on the table so I think that might be why I'm struggling a little bit but maybe if I did have an iPad maybe I could have a play around and try it out interesting I'm curious to see if, if you ever get an iPad, if that does solve it for you. Yeah, yeah. Do you we'll think see. it's like tilting? Like, I know a lot of people who paint like to have their easels up at a degree. Yeah, angle. maybe, yeah. I guess I could get a little stand and put my iPad on there. Helena asks, is there a package design you did from a product that you use yourself? Um, I'm trying to think. I've had a thing sent to me from clients, which has been really nice to see. The clients from all over the world, if they have sent me stuff like candles, um, beauty products, stuff like that, and that's really nice. And I do use all of them. It's awesome. So that is nice to have things around my room that I've designed. But I don't think I've never purchased anything from just the store. As like I said before, everything is worldwide. There's not a lot of things in where I live that I work with anyway. Totally. That makes sense. Um, and if you're just tuning in right now to chat, um, we are currently working on packaging design for Cheesies, which is an organic, fun, whimsical cracker company. <laughs> uh, lots of puns, lots of fun little cute illustrations, um, all done by the wonderful Christina from Club Creative. And if you're tuning in on YouTube, make sure you come up. on the packaging, because if you're really enjoying something, I like it if they've got it all on there and you can just have a quick look at what else is available. Yeah, it's like encouraging them to continue enjoying more products, from yeah, brand, yeah. which is great. Jeffrey says, I love to work in, I like to work in non-destructive though, uh, for when a client needs an adjustment in text. Yep. Non-destructive work is the best way. <laughs> so she's done all of her masking on these images and things as well in Illustrator so that she's not destroying the images, but just masking out the ones she doesn't like. Yeah, we are gonna need to do that for the other two flavors. We have these images here. Hey, Mike, welcome to the stream. So I think I'm quite happy with how this is looking now. Yeah, it's yeah. looking great. Everything fits in. I can't These... wait to see how this looks in the, the mock-up. Yeah. The mock-up I've got is actually like a craft mock-up as well. So it's got a bit of texture to it. So Great. it'll work well with what we're looking for. Do you know if the, the UK has specific like nutritional tables that you have to stick to or is it pretty open? I think a lot of them are like this and they're usually on the front, oh. I've noticed. Or we're just going for the looks today. <laughs> we're not no, that's going fair. <laughs> that one's way prettier than the American version. So this is a yeah. very boring table. 
I have seen a few that have been quite nice where I've seen some like this where they're longer, but then they have like curves here and, you know, it's like blocked out, separated. Mm -hmm. So I've seen some nicer ones, but I think they are usually like the one above. That's cool. Now we'll start moving on with the next flavours. Which one are you doing next? I think we should do Moxa Hella Good. <laughs> I am going to keep the layout um, very similar on all of them, but make changes that are needed like this. It's not going to fit. That might just need to go on two lines. I noticed you outlined that uh, type. Is there any reason in particular you outlined it versus just nudging it down? Um, I do. I prefer everything to be outlined. I don't know why. I just. Yeah. Even though it's a pain if I need to change anything, but I don't know. I feel like it's just easier to work with. I do know, I know, I saw the other day that there's this touch type tool, which mm -hmm. I didn't know existed. I think I saw it on an Instagram reel the other day and was absolutely amazed. Yeah, the touch type tool, I think Nick Longo and I were working on a brand together and he told me about it and it blew my mind. And then, uh, yeah just used it for the rest of the program, I think. It was great. <laughs> it's a great way of just moving things around. Yeah, I haven't used it properly yet, but I will definitely try it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Nicole asks, do you have any tips for getting yourself out of a creative block? Doing passion projects, definitely. Yeah, yeah just get into passion projects, have a look through different other people's work, like I said, you can have a look at club creative challenges, go on the hashtag, have a look at how other people have designed that certain brand. I think it's that's what's good about passion projects because everybody is working on the same brand and you get to see everyone's take on it and how they think it should work. So I think that's a good way because then you might think, oh, I think this could look like this. I think this could look like this and then you get to, you just come up with lots of ideas then. It feels more like a challenge then rather than, I think that motivates you a little bit to try and think of some cool, fun ideas. Do you, um, do your challenges have like a time constraint to them or are they pretty just as no, long no. as you need to get it done? Yeah, it's just, it's open. It's just there as just a resource if you need it one day. Yeah. It's, it's not any type of competition or anything it's just if you can't think because sometimes it's hard if you are coming up with just your own projects and you can't it's hard to come up with a business name true uh, have you ever done a like a 15 minute creative challenge before yeah i did a while ago and i did film it for a reel and then I hated it, so then I didn't post it. But I wish I did post it because it was fun. But no, I have done a few. I've also done one where it was um, like you do on the random letter generator on Google. And then I just generated two letters and then tried to create a monogram with those letters. Yeah, how did that go? It was actually quite good. It was fun, yeah. I I really like working on it because it was, I feel like with monograms, they are quite, they can be very difficult sometimes putting two letters together, especially in a specific font that you're using. Yeah. So that was really fun to just play around, try a few letters and then just in case I did ever get a client that had them same two letters, <laughs> I already had a few ideas ready. That's awesome. Um... Joanne is asking, how do you cut those crackers? The menu is hidden. 
Cut those. Oh, so that was a PNG that she had, and then she used the she used the shape, and then used that as a mask. Yeah. So solid color, and then uh, was it enable clipping mask? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, clipping mask. Yeah. Clipping mask, and it just crops out the other pieces, but it's not destructive, so she can pull out those crackers or the other ones whenever she wants. Now, usually, if it was a proper project and it was going to print, I would spend a bit more time on them in Photoshop and cut them all out separately. Yeah, I think that's necessary because from my experience, when it's gone to print, sometimes there's artifacts that happen yeah, with the yeah. clipping mask. Uh, so it just makes it a little bit easier, but it's like a quick and rough mock-up really quick. Now we're just going to carry on with the fill for the illustrations like we did yesterday. It's just very rough again. Um, mozzarella, we decided on green. It's the cutest green mozzarella I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't think mozzarella, I don't think it should actually be green. Maybe we should <laughs> add a separate color. Maybe just have the leaves green. That could work really well. I feel like if it, if everything is green in the background, it's fine. If, you know, I don't think yeah. anybody's going to be made to feel like the, the cheese is pretty <laughs> sick. Uh, Helena says, about the creative block, I go on a walk and do a fast design challenge as well with site. It generates multiple kinds of design prompts, a prompt for UX design for physical product. Oh, that's cool. That's a really interesting yeah. idea. Yeah, I think uh, like 15 minute challenges are great because you're constrained. I think the, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I, I personally struggle with like open-ended where it's like, okay, I can spend four weeks on this project as a personal project. And then all of a sudden, all the time is gone. So if I just say, okay, I'm gonna spend 15 minutes on a crazy idea and then do another one and another one and I think that helps me with just yeah yeah I guess but that's just because that's how my brain works and I get yeah really excited and work on things for way too long but going on a walk is a fantastic yeah piece of advice So we've got some leaves and some green mozzarella. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna try and work it in. In about 27 minutes, we are going to be doing the artist spotlight. So make sure you tune in for that. So now I'm just going to group these because we are going to keep that bait. So you're thinking that these uh, pieces of uh, mozzarella crackers will have some basil included in it? Yeah, I guess it can do. I think if cheeses was a real product, it could have every flavor. When I was <laughs> looking into flavors, I was like, oh, we could do nacho cheese. There were so many different flavors. We could have, they might do mixed flavors. Helena asks, what is the Otter Spotlight? Well, Helena, the Otter Spotlight is where we get to feature some of our wonderful community members and show off their work and tell you how awesome they are and where to follow them and all that good stuff. So if you want to, and you're curious, you are more than able to uh, go to the top 
corner of your Behance chat where it says chat info artist spotlight. Click on artist spotlight and you can nominate yourself or a friend or a loved one, whoever you want to that page and they'll have a chance to be uh, featured one day. So feel free to nominate whoever you want. We're just adding these little geometric shapes again. I really like how it it looks like it's you can feel that it's been snapped and you can see that the cracker is cracked, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you're not really a crisp or a crafter person, huh? No, not really. I do like crisp, but I don't choose to have them. I don't go into a shop and think, oh, I can really fancy a packet of crisp. I would more than likely get a packet of sweets instead. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you on that. Said says, I think you should add a little details on the mozzarella cheese as you've added the, on the cheddar cheese illustrations. Yeah, we just maybe do. a couple little dots. Yeah. Well, yeah says the, uh, the triangles remind me of cheese pieces. Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah, great, more cheese. <laughs> I feel like mozzarella is really just quite smooth, so maybe we could just add lines on the outside rather than on the inside oh yeah there you go just gonna do the same as yesterday just make it quite thin I know you mentioned that you have clients all over the world. What, which country or place would you want to go visit a client to see their project? Probably would be in America. Yeah, where about? Yeah, um, I have one in San Francisco, I think, yes. and then is Sacramento? Is that in? It's outside of uh, yeah, it's in California. Yeah. Um, I also have one in New York. That's a bakery one, which I am still currently working on. Oh, fun. Yeah, so that's hopefully will be opening sometime soon. So that would be really nice to see walking past and seeing um, the shop sign, everything inside. Yeah. Then I would probably have to eat some cakes and baked goods. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I can ask, how does Christina find the right contrast for colors for a branding project? Um, I think just a lot of just playing around with it, trial and error, having a look. Even with this right now, I'm not 100% sure on the green, but I think it works on everything else. But I think with this, it's just it's not the clearest to read on the craft. But we can have a look at that and just after we've done this one. But yeah, I think it's just a lot of trial and error, playing around, seeing what works best. And if you can print it out, see how it looks printed. If you've got those specific materials, if it is a printed project, but with um, just branding projects, then I just try out a few options. I feel like I just, Normally I would have some understanding of what the client, the direction the client wants to go. And I will have a look into those colors. Like if they say, oh, we definitely want blues in there. Then usually with the two concepts that I send over, one of them would be more the safer option with exactly what they asked for. And one might include a complete crazy color palette that I think would be amazing but they might not want that so I do try and propose two different styles in the two concepts but with the colors 
I do just play around like we did yesterday. We just went through a few colors and looked at what we thought would work. Yeah, I think, like you said, you're kind of also trying to balance it with the other colors in the brand as well, not just yeah. that one piece. Yeah, we definitely want to keep them all bright. I think sometimes if we do have one really deep color, so maybe in the future, if Cheesies has a very large product line, then they might have to go down a few color palettes and have some deep, darker colors and some lighter pastel colors. But for now with these three, we're going for really bright, strong colors. These illustrations are super fun. I just love mm -hmm. how you're pulling them together. Actually, we're going to need to cut out these holes. I just realized. I'm just using the Pathfinder tool, which is my probably my favorite tool on Illustrator. I love that tool as well, but I always click it around and do 15 versions of it first. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the right one? Is this the right one? <laughs> yeah, I think I always just use the top left and bottom left, so. But I am trying to start using the Shape Builder tool a lot more, but I just, mm -hmm. I got taught the Pathfinder tool and I've always just stuck with the Pathfinder tool. Yeah. I mean, if it's working, no need to yeah, change yeah. it. Helena asked, any beginner advice on uh, for a beginner on packaging design? Um, I would say just have a look at other packaging out there see how they fit things in how they work around the little small spaces um just get a lot of other already made packaging have a look around your house anything you've bought recently just take a look at what's already been made and just see how they fit everything in but i guess if you are just starting to do packaging then just do just have a do some research have a look at what size text needs to be all stuff like that really and yeah just have a play around and see what works yeah, that's good advice i think for me whenever i think about trying a new project or something that i haven't had experience in is understanding what I love about what they've done. And so it could be like four things. I could love the type or the contrast or the patterns or the illustrations. And then that helps kind of break down things. Cause I think if you look at it on surface value without diving deep into what makes it work for you, yeah, then it can be a little bit daunting because it's too much information. So if you like break it down systematically, you can start to understand and kind of replicate without yeah. stealing. This one looks really angry <laughs> with the red. Jeez Louise. <laughs> About 15 minutes before the artist spotlight, but if you are on YouTube and you're wondering Where's all these questions and these fantastic comments coming from? Well, it's because they're on Behance. So make sure you come over to be.net slash Adobe Live. Uh, type in chat, hang out with us here. We'll answer any questions you have. Um, happy to help. Colby says, loves the type. What up, Colby? How are you doing? He said it's very fun. Or it's fun. So 
So we have all the flavors all completed. Everything's here. Sweet. Johanna is asking, uh, are we going to see the final product? I think that's probably the next stage, right? Yeah. They're yeah. showing those mockups. I think I'm actually just going to keep it simple around the side, the back of the packet. Just so then once we put it on the mock-ups, we can just use the one because they are all the same on every one. And maybe we could try a dark green. I think it's just a really hard colour. Yeah, that might be or... darker. So now we have all of the packaging completed. All the flavors are on there, the fun puns, the images and the illustrations. And start to get it ready for the mock-ups. So it says it's looking really nice. Good. So are you mocking it up? Oh, you have to break it apart for the, uh, yeah, the mock-up, yeah. huh? Ah. So I'm just going to group it all. T64 TV says, uh, it would be nice to see the crackers in illustration form too. Yeah, that could be a cool, like a, like a poster design later on if she wanted to redo everything and not redo the things, but also add cracker illustrations too later on. Great thing with the yeah, system yeah. is it's flexible, right? So you can add as many illustrations as you need for whatever advertising campaign you might need as well. Yeah, yeah. I think with this, I just really wanted to have some real imagery in there, just then, mm -hmm. you know, they know what they're buying. I think because this packaging is so crazy and out there and just full of information, you might not really want to, you might not know what it is from just cheesies. Yeah. So right now you are, what? Are, how? Explain this process of breaking I'm just, this image down. So I'm just using the size that I already got from the mock-up, and then just using the clipping mask to put all the artwork in just so then it's easier to move over onto Photoshop rather than having the full. So now I know exactly where the center of the design is. Got it, makes sense. And then we'll also do the same for the sides. Uh, TV64, she does not use Dimension right now, but is looking into it later on. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I hadn't even heard of it for quite it, only recently. I've started seeing it all over Instagram. Everyone started trying it out recently. I've seen a lot of it on Instagram Reels. But no, I've I hadn't heard of it before then. Johanna says, I heard today most printers can print in RGB. Is that why you edit in RGB? But no. no. <laughs> we mentioned this yesterday we were giving ourselves the full budget and we're just going from without looking too much into the print specifications or anything but yeah I wish every client had 
the biggest budget and they could print it on TV, but I know that it is hard and it is it can get quite costly, so it is upsetting. I've had times where I've worked in RGB and I've not realised till the very end and then I switch it over to CMYK and then it's just so dull and ugly. Yep. Um, so you'd ask, where do you find inspiration for using the fonts? Did you already have an idea of trying to do some markery goodness or did you kind of already have something predetermined? Um, it was just from when I was looking at other packaging of other products and I searched up just like natural packaging, organic packaging, you know, healthy food snack packaging. And then I just saw the handwritten style and I just really liked the way that looked. So yes, and then I just started having a look around on different websites usually. Like I, I think I had a look through Adobe fonts, Google fonts, creative market and then just tried yesterday we paired them all together looks at what works best the headline and the accent font and the body copy but I did want to go for this playful type font where it's not so serious and so clean and tidy yeah So when you're mocking these mockups up, because these mockups can get pretty heavy, are you working off of just one file or are you working on three individual ones for each? No, I do usually just work off one, but I do normally just hope for the best that it's going to survive, but yeah. we will see. I think it should be okay. Sweet. And yesterday you mentioned that these are from uh, Yellow Images. Or... Yeah, yeah. And you, you said you have a front and a back, is that correct? Yeah, we have a front and a back, yeah. The right. back has a seam right down the centre. That's why we just had to do that where we slightly pushed one side of the information to the right. Eight minutes until the artist spotlight and see if we can get a mock-up cranked out before then. I hope so. Let's see if uh, these gigantic Baxter files <laughs> allow that. There we go. Nice. Have one. All seems to fit. We'll just export these as we go, just in case we do have time. Look at that. Is there a reason why you uh, paste it in as uh, pixels over like a smart object or layers or path or shape layer or anything like that? Um, I'm just doing it as pixels now just because I am worried that they might be <laughs> a little bit too crazy. Yeah. But yeah, normally I do just put them in as smart objects. Yeah, smart objects are a great way to go about it, but if you are worried about computer performance and things like that, then doing pixels is probably a good bet. Yeah. We're having so it's a problem of now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jenna says, This is so cool. Starry eyes, smiley face. So he says, This is looking just perfect. Heart eyes, TV64. Looks awesome. Excellent mock up. Yeah, they're great mock ups. Huh? I'm getting yes. something. <laughs> I think I might just delete this now. Huh? 
awesome. And you can always adjust your levels and some of those filters if you're not completely yeah. happy with what the creator of the uh, the mock-up made. So if you want, you can just, just um, mess with that. Yeah, uh, I do usually good. mess around with it sometimes. Um, so Janice says, how is the highlights and shadows added to the smart object? Um, this one has a pre-built into it, but each one has typically like a bunch of different layers within it. So she's kind of showing right now. It's... Yeah, so this, there is a lot in here. Ooh, a gold layer. Sign me yeah. up. <laughs> I'm a sucker for gold layers. So you'd ask, do you think a mock-up presentation is as important as the as designing the artwork? Yeah, I do think mock-ups help a lot. Mock-ups just sell the brand for you. If you show people how it will look in real life, they're more likely to be able to visualize the product. And it's just, it's nice for yourself as well to see what you've designed. Yeah, TV also agrees. It says help solve the design. The flat design might not properly be appreciated by the client. I agree. Yeah, I, I think bottles, especially, like I think if you can make a physical mock up for it and hand it to the client, they can see it, feel it, hold it. Yeah, yeah. Anything you can do to helps with the presentation factor and will help sell the idea. Yeah, I do find with what you've just mentioned, the bottles and any labeling work. Normally, when you send them the full flat label, they they can't picture what will be shown and what won't be shown. So then sometimes mock-ups are really helpful there to show them this is how much you're going to see yeah. on the front of the bottle and this is what's on the side and this is what's on the back. Yeah. I think it also helps contextualize, you know, I think a lot of times if they just look at the flat thing, they might say, oh, we need to have X, Y, Z added to this. If not, then we don't have enough information. But if you see it on the actual packaging, yeah, yeah. Say, oh, we actually don't have any more room. Like we're already out of space. So it makes it easier to say, okay, we don't need to add, uh, you know, every single little detail. Yeah, yeah. Detail. This is where I was having the problem yesterday. Because of this fold, so this information would actually be underneath the fold. So we could just chop it off. So it looks like it is actually under the fold. Joseph asks, where did you get the mock-up from? This packaging design is amazing. This is from Yellow Images. But you can find mockups on Creative Market, Adobe Stock. You work for them. You said Etsy yesterday, which I thought was really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot on Etsy. Yeah. So lots of lots of spots. LS Store or LS Graphics as well. There we go. We have the back of the pack. Nice. And then we just have one more for the front. Cool. Let's uh, throw that in and then we'll jump into the artist spotlight. Sure. Abdul, we mentioned uh, just a couple minutes ago the why, why she's pacing as a pixel, not a smart object, is because of computer resources right now. Smart objects yeah. are great, but to save some resources and processing power. Uh, just putting it as a pixel right now is, is fine. There we go. So we have all the packets done. Awesome. Well then let's jump into 
Our artist spot. Uh, words are so hard. <laughs> Our artist spotlight. Um, if you want to nominate yourself, friends, family, coworkers, other creatives, uh, make sure you do that up in the top right corner of your screen where it says artist spotlight. There's a nomination button there. Um, today, our wonderful artist that we're spotlighting is Mike Musas, uh, located in the Dominican Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo, sorry. Um, and make sure that you go over to his page, check him out on um, Behance, but he's also got a follow button there. Make sure you hit that, give him a good like, check out his work, give him some comments, some praises, all that good stuff. Um, we're going to just dive into his work really quick so you can see a glimpse of who Mike is and what he creates. Looks like this is I, a chiropractic brand. Yeah. Oh, I really love anything that's animated. I wish I could do it. Yeah, this is a great way of like kind of showing how yeah. everything comes this together. Is... Yeah, I really like that. I think it's really clever. I think even the, I think one of my favorite pieces is the before and after yeah this is really nice yeah it's such a clever solution as well with the ampersand yeah. getting the curvature of the spine mm -hmm. incorporated is super super cool yeah oh i really like it when creators do this as well when they explain why they've done certain things yeah that's super that's solid. really nice yeah we just posted uh mike's uh, be hands in chat so make sure you check it out it's a direct link for you right there so here are the mock-ups see this is what i mean by it just it sells the brand it's nice to see the products the design on the mock-ups absolutely this is a great way of getting you know clients buy in and saying okay yeah, well, yeah. have you thought about letterheads and folders and things like that and it's like yes i have here you go and oh these they are awesome? fun they are fun. I could imagine them as little gifts, you know, for Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. Or animations uh, on a website. Like, yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's really fun. Or oh, his social media templates. It all works really well. The colors, the logo. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Nice. Want to check out another one? Yeah. There's this one. Oh, this awesome. one caught, caught my eye. I think this one's so cool. It's illustration work, even the pattern in the background. And this with the added grain on top. Yeah, that really little bit of noise really brings yeah, it yeah. to life. It really suits the style. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. I wonder That's if so he's, he's selling these posters. Mike, we saw you in chat earlier. <laughs> Let us know if you're selling these posters. They're really cool. Yeah, I really like all the different landmarks. Yeah, those are cool. It does say that his poster projects. So oh, yeah. yeah, these are really nice. Well, Mike, really if you're still like around, them. let us know if you're selling them off that are just living on the digital world right now or not. Yeah. Look Whichever this. one you want to click on, it's all it's you. <laughs> Congo Electric. Oh. Some more animation. I know you love the animation. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I like how he's done that. Mm -hmm. Arrow. That's a great way of bringing that brand to life and mm -hmm. kind of reinforcing the motion that's already happening in the logo. As yeah, well. yeah. It's very cool. Again, this is really nice to see. This is really cool. How he's got from one location to another. That's awesome. Nicely done. Your case studies are really robust. Yeah, Actually yeah. Great, great to see. So make sure you check out Mike. Um, we'll scroll down and make sure we can shout out his Instagram as well. Um, but Mike, fantastic work. Great to see you on Behance. Um, so you got your contact information there your Twitter, your Dribble, Instagram, all shared there as well. So make mm -hmm. sure you give Mike a follow, check out all their social media. Um, make sure you go give him a comment, tell him, you know, creative community is with him. So anyways, it's perfect. We'll get back to the mock-ups now. Thank okay. you, Mike. For... Oh, Mike's still here. Let us know about your posters. <laughs> They're so cool. Awesome to see you, man. Um, cool. So 
where are we at now in the project? What else do we have left? We got about so, 20 minutes. I think we should work on a poster, something like available now, for sale. Okay. Um, yeah, just show off the flavors, the products. Imagine it in a shop, a billboard, a bus stop, anything like that. Love it. Do you have mock-ups for all those? No, no, we just have a poster cool. today. I'm just going to drag those in. I think it would be really fun as well, all the social media for this product. Maybe I mm -hmm. could work on that at a later date and then upload them onto my Instagram. Yeah, that'd be fun. You're going to do a four by four like you, you're typically Yeah, yeah, doing. maybe, yeah, yeah. I was gushing on her four by fours. If you're not familiar, check out her Instagram. She does these really great little snapshots of kind of her whole brand deck that you might normally see in like a, a Behance post, but it's just a single post on her Instagram. You see the kind of full spectrum of each brand. It's really cool stuff. Is it fun? Would you put like a drop shadow behind each of them or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's really nice to see them all lined up together. Yeah, it's it's like this is like a, a real brand already. Who would have thought? <laughs> so I'm just adding just a light drop shadow on those, not too much. And then uh, Mike says that the posters collection was a passion project. Well, Oh, see, that's what we we're talking about earlier is passion projects are a great way to like get people excited about what you're able to do. And Mike is delivering in spades. So great job. You should definitely start selling those. Yeah, they're cool. I really want to use this ticket idea just because it's on the packaging itself. So I think we could use that maybe as like a border for the text. Just need to make it a little bit longer. So using this as like the head headline border, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I think I might put something like available now. What kind of background are you going to use or background color? Are you going to keep it light or are you going to do something a little bit more um, spicy? I think we should maybe try and pull in all three of the colors, maybe. We could stick with the craft, but I think because we've got the craft packaging, it might be a bit too much craft. Uh, I agree. It could be. Kind of has a like a typewritery feel. Maybe it's because the letter spacing on it, it feels like a... Yeah. Oh, huh, that's interesting. I think it's just at that size compared to the rest as well. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's the black background, but yeah, it's cool stuff. What's the name of that typeface that you're using? Uh, it is Kopi Senja Sans. Oh, cool. That one's one. from Creative Market, I think. Oh, nice. So I think it would be really fun to have all the little doodles everywhere that we've designed. Things like this might be cute.
What other copy are you thinking you're going to need to put on there? Is it just available now? Um, I think we should have the logo and maybe just the flavors, maybe above and below the packets. Hmm, that's a good idea. Available at Tesco's? Yeah, yeah, we could do, yeah. <laughs> can have a look for a Tesco. It's the only brand I know. That was just... <laughs> That's as limited as my UK knowledge goes in terms of where I can buy ch chips or crackers. Yeah, Tesco or there's Asda. Oh yeah. But I, I do usually go to Tesco. So I'm just getting the flavors out. I'm just going to put them all in a line so then I can make sure they're all aligned and in the same. Right. Michelle says uh, the smiley face you can also use. Yeah, yeah, point. definitely. Yeah. Uh, we have about 20 minutes left, or sorry, 15, 14 minutes left. So make sure you, if you have any questions, please let us know. We'd love to answer them for you. Oh, that's looking really good. I love that. I could see this really sticking out on like a subway ad or. Yeah, yeah. Or subway, or like bus. It's fun. Maybe we could add some of these just flying around in the background. <laughs> Me. Still doing a lot of thinking today. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe we could have some just Maybe we could just have pieces kind of flying around, sticking out everywhere. That's fun. Get the crumbs everywhere. I could see there yeah. being a lot of like fun copy around crummage. So when you're working on these posters, how do you typically kind of approach them? Are you looking at hierarchy, messaging? What, what are your thoughts? Um, I think usually I normally would sketch it all out first on a piece of paper okay. and see what content goes where and then normally I would have all the content ready and have it all I would normally just type it all out here so then I could see it all see how many words are in certain sentences and see where could each thing go and then I normally just gather everything that needs to go on there and have a look at everything and then just start coming up with ideas and playing around with layout. Yeah. The great thing is with such, like with all these pieces being vectorized is you have endless opportunity to yeah, yeah. do a series of these posters, one-offs, billboards, wrap a vehicle, whatever you want. Yeah, you can really just go crazy with it. Is there anything on this project so far that you wish you could have done differently or changed or would do better for next time? Like, um, was it all pretty, I think, pretty spot on? 
I think maybe I would have liked to work on the brand itself a bit more so the logo work and see whether we could have done something fun I think because there's so many E's we could have had something really fun maybe we could have turned one of them into a little face mm. a little smiley face in there I think that could have been really fun yeah I feel like the logo is in a really good spot like even though it's just kind of a typeface it works well especially with how you treated it on all the packaging like it it reads well it feels nice like it's pretty lovely yeah i think it's it has worked well just because we have pushed on all the content everything mm -hmm. we've really gone crazy with the illustrations and the images absolutely i think if it was a bit more plain we might have needed to add a bit more to the logo yeah so i'm just adding all sorts everywhere just making the poster as busy as the packaging packaging themselves we could add smile faces that's what we're missing it's the smiley faces yes yeah it's gonna feel so much better with a couple smileys on there ah chef's kiss <laughs> So if you were to present this to a client, what other pieces of collateral or mock-ups would you include to kind of sell and win the pitch? Um, I think I would definitely show this, show maybe on a shelf if I could find a mock-up like that, or maybe I would even, if it was a really big project that I really wanted to get, then maybe I would get some craft paper, print it out, glue it together and take it into a shop and just take mm. a picture of it. But I think what else could you really produce? Probably like you said, like show it on a bus stop, show it how it can be advertised in different um, locations, maybe even show it with some kids or adults eating it, holding the packet. Yeah. I'm just going to try the craft and see how it works. Yeah, I think there's a bit too much craft. I think if you took all this content and just duplicated it and did one-offs now, it would work really well with like the colored background. So if like you did the original cheesy, easy yeah, cheesy, yeah. and then just did a yellow swatch in the background, that packaging will pop off and it's just yeah would look awesome. I could see that performing super well in like a social post or like a busy like you know when you're scrolling through Instagram all of a sudden you get hit with that, that yeah. color palette and the crafts and it just look so good. I think maybe we could try gonna try it's a good test idea. to see if all the the color the colors work together or not yeah yeah <laughs> hopefully green almost 
It reminds me of um, traffic lights. <laughs> <laughs> Going yellow instead. Yeah, I might need something a little bit more neutral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do think it's fun, but and it shows that there's three flavors. Yeah. It could be nice if we had maybe like a, a wooden countertop or a marble countertop. With oh yeah. Proper image. Like gray maybe. I think maybe we can try out what you mentioned and just do the one flavor. I think we'll only have time for just the one. Yeah. About four minutes left. So two minutes to get this muck up out. I know you don't really do the the, the time-based challenges, but <laughs> you have one now. Oh, let's see. And this can be a lot smaller for this one. Nice, it's looking good. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think like if you were to be scrolling through Instagram or whatever, get hit with that that bright yellow, I think yeah. it would perform really well. So we have just enough time to get a quick little recap in. I'd love to see kind of over the last two days, all the progress you've made, all this great work that you've done. Just a quick little. Yeah. So let's see where we started. So at the beginning, we had the mood board. I think we have definitely hit all the points that we wanted to with the hand lettering, the craft, the puns, the full packaging, the illustrations, and we've managed to mix in the real imagery with the illustrations. So I think that's worked well. The fonts, we've used all the fonts that we chose, used the logo as is, and we've, had a, we've chosen the colours. We have tweaked a few colours to make it work on the craft but it seemed to have worked well. Illustration, we've got the smiley everywhere. We've got the cheeses. We decided to add a fill on them just to make them pop a bit more in the packaging. We've worked on all the product information and placed them into the designs. And these are all the label, the packaging designs we've created. We've mixed in the hand-drawn illustrations with the images, used all the fonts that were chosen, and yeah, just created a really fun brand. And here are the final mock-ups. The back is here too. Yeah, these are great. Honestly, this is such an exciting brand. I think the color palettes are working now. The illustrations are fun. I think the mock-ups really, like, like you mentioned, they help sell the product, they sell the idea, yeah. they sell the concept. Oh, look, you do have a poster mock-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I gotta get it. Gotta get it, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if you can do it. I think we can. Wait. If Adobe, uh, if your Photoshop will participate. Oh, we can do it. We can do it. I don't think it's quite the right size, but oh, we'll fine. make it work. Ship it. There we go. Saved. All right, let's see that. There we go. Ah, so beautiful. So easy, cheesy. I love that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, 
Christina, thank you so much for these wonderful two days. I've learned a ton. I'm sure chat has as well. <laughs> um, this has been super fun. So where do people find you again? Um, you can go to my Instagram, Club Creative LTD, or on Behance or to my website, but I'm mainly on Instagram. So Club Creative LTD. Perfect. Love that. And if you are just now tuning in, make sure you stick around. We have some really exciting uh, Dovey Creative Challenge encores after the stream. So you'll see some of the best of the XD Creative Challenges, but then also come back tomorrow. Um, Andrew Hockrattle and Nick Longo, two wonderful humans, are doing a very special episode of their office hours. Um, this Friday, their office hours episodes hit their 100th episode. So it's going to be a very exciting, very fun stream. I can't wait to see it with y'all. See y'all soon. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.